Hello and welcome to this tutorial on MAC addresses. As a network administrator, you will come across addressing all the time, be it a layer 3 IP address or a layer 2 MAC address. So being comfortable with addressing is really important, not only on an operational level and a troubleshooting level, but also a design level. And the reason is addresses identify endpoints on your network and oftentimes you will be dealing with these endpoints so you need to understand how to find them and what the addresses mean so we will start off by looking at the format of a MAC address and then we'll move ahead into the different types of MAC addresses okay so let's get started okay when we talk about MAC addresses we are really talking about Ethernet addresses so if you have an Ethernet network, each device on that network needs an Ethernet address, a MAC address, in order to communicate with everyone else. So think of the MAC address as being similar to a postal address for your home. This is how people find you. And Ethernet addresses are defined, they're called MAC addresses because they're defined in the MAC protocols like 802.3. And so we're talking layer two of the OSI model. So this is a MAC address, and this is a real one. It's taken from my PC. And the first thing to know is that the total length is six bytes long. There are eight bits in each byte, so you have 48 bits. That's the total length of this address, a MAC address. And you'll see they are often written in hexadecimal. So if you haven't taken any time yet to get familiar with hex, please do so, because MAC addresses are almost always written in hex. Okay, each character is hexadecimal and it's four bits long. So if you add them all up, that's another way to get to the total length of 48 bits. A MAC address is usually stored in a ROM chip on a device and that's usually where the firmware is stored and it's used during boot up of the device. And so if we look at this particular MAC, the first thing we should note is the first half of this address. And this is known as the OUI or Organizationally Unique Identifier. What this means is every company that makes a network interface, an Ethernet network interface, let's say a computer NIC, gets assigned an OUI. And so that way, each company can be identified what they manufacture. In fact, if you were to take this one or the one on your PC and Google it, you'll come up with a list of each manufacturer and their associated OUI. So you can identify the make of the card. The second thing to notice has to do with the second half of this MAC address. And this is a unique number that each company is responsible for assigning. So if I'm a manufacturer of NICs and I create 10,000 cards, each card is going to have a unique number, this second half. And so by doing that, we put the two halves together. And so we have a unique first half and a unique second half. So when you put them together, you have a unique identifier. This, this MAC address is known as a globally unique address. There should be no other computer with an Ethernet NIC or port on it which has the same MAC address. Okay, very important to understand. If you want, you can find yours. If you're on a, um, a Windows PC, you can type ipconfig slash all and you will see your MAC address. If you're on a Linux box, if config dash a, you may see the format a little bit differently. Um, every eight bits, so every byte, you may see a colon as opposed to this format. It's just a different way of presenting the MAC address. We have three different types of addresses. The first one is a unicast address. So a MAC address that is a unicast means it's an address of one device and one device only. So this is often referred to uh, by a couple other names. You may hear a burned in address or the Ethernet address or of course the MAC address. They're all referring to the same thing. The second type of address is known as a multicast and a multicast address references a subset of devices on a network. So let's say I have 10 PCs on my local area network. A multicast group could be only, let's say, four of them. A broadcast address is a little bit different than a multicast. It is an address which signifies all devices on the network. 
So with that same local area network I just mentioned, all 10 PCs would be addressed by a single broadcast address. And there's an easy way to identify the broadcast. It looks like this. It is all Fs in hexadecimal. Addresses are used in Ethernet frames, and they're located in the header of the frame. And you'll usually see them um, as both the destination MAC address and the source address. So any device that comes across an Ethernet frame can identify where this frame is supposed to go, and they can also identify who created it, who sourced that frame. Okay, and that's pretty much everything you need to know about MAC addresses. Let's take a quick summary of what we went over. So, we know MAC addresses are six bytes in length, and they are written in hexadecimal. And the format is essentially two, two parts. The first part is the OUI, which is the manufacturer, and the second part is a unique number assigned by each manufacturer. You put these together and you have a globally unique address, so no other Ethernet port in the world should use the same MAC address as any other one. They are unique. And then finally, we went over the three different types of addresses, unicast, multicast, and broadcast. And we know that we can find these MAC addresses in Ethernet frames as both a destination and a source address. Okay, and that is the tutorial on MAC addresses. Thanks for watching.